a lucky shooting eyewitness who testified before the Lagos State and SARS Judicial Panel is attacked for giving her testimony, while a member of the panel is also being threatened. And as ex-governor Emekai Herioha of Imo State declares his intention to run for office again in 2023, some stakeholders accuse him of violating the Electoral Act. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Korn. An eyewitness who testified before the Lagos State Judicial Panel on Police Brutality has announced that she was attacked for giving a testimony to the panel. KMC Chuku Ibe was one of the eyewitnesses that appeared before the panel whose report contradicts what the government said happened on the evening of October 20 of 2020. Now, in a video published on social media, she said she was attacked by three men in Lagos because of her testimony. Also a member of the panel, Ibonolu Adeborua, also stated that some persons he suspects to be working for the government have been threatening him. And lawyer who represents NSAS protesters at the Lagos Judicial Panel, Adishina Ogunlana, has called for the resignation of President Muhammad Buhari and Governor Babajide Songolu of Lagos State. Now, following all of the reports uh, delivered by the panel. Joining us to discuss this is Adishina Ogunlana. He's the legal counsel of the NSAS protesters and Dele Farutimi. He's a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Farasimi. Let's look at the recent developments, of course. Uh, I, like I started in my intro, two persons who have said that they, uh, one was attacked, the other is receiving threats, another is asking for uh, a resignation of the president and the governor, which is almost um, a mirage. But uh, I want you to take a look at all of the things that have happened. We tried to have a conversation last week um, on this same issue, but we have more development. So I'm going to let you tell me what you think. Well, um, one thing you can say for the Nigerian government is that it is very predictable. When the panel was set up, we were reluctant to go before it because we were not too certain that the government that set it up was necessarily interested in what its report would have to be if it was going to be a truthful, judicious commission, because we knew the truth. It wasn't like we were unaware of what the truth was. The truth hasn't changed since the night of the 20th of October. The only thing that has changed since the night of the 20th of October has been the several stories of the several spokespersons and representatives of both the Nigerian state and the ruling class. So the governor's stories have evolved severally. Uh, the Nigerian army's stories have evolved severally. Uh, Mr. Lai Mohammed, sorry, Lai Mohammed stories have evolved severally. Each and every one of the stories of each and every one of the persons involved, including the ones who decided that they have become the finders of cameras and things, everybody's stories have evolved. The only thing that has not evolved has been the truth. It's still the same truth as it was on the night of the 20th of October. And the panel had no choice but to find as it has found, because it is in the nature of truth not to change. Now that the panel has found as it has found, you have seen highly paid consultants from those plain acting statesmen framing the less weight 
to the lawyers coming to play the bellicose, garrulous noisemakers shaping the alternative narrative that the government would rather push. All this continues to change, but the truth does not change. And the panel has found the truth. Now, do I expect President Buhari to resign, or shall I say General Buhari to resign because the panel has found that all of them have been lying and there was indeed a massacre? Of course, I don't expect that to happen. It wouldn't. It doesn't change the fact that having established this truth, responsibility ought to be taken. And if they will not take responsibility, it behooves us who call ourselves citizens to decide the manner of our responses. The only thing we must do is begin to react and then get onto the street and become violent. They will be very happy if we did that. I wouldn't. We wouldn't. They are the violent ones. And let me deal with the issue of threats. Hmm. It's unfortunate that a young lady like Kamsi, whom I know because I had occasion to have provided safe housing to them in the immediate aftermath of the protest and when the state and all these attack dogs were growling after them in the immediate aftermath. And um, I know her, Mary, and she's a very dedicated, honest, patriotic young Nigerian, just a struggling young woman, a tennis coach. One of the strokes of Machet, one of the Machet strokes, almost slashed off her wrist. She's a, she's a semi-professional tennis player. That's how she helps her living. Mm. Those who play tennis at the VGC club, they all know her. She's a coach there. They, they stopped her at the bus stop, her own account. And they, they, they shone light in her eye. Say, okay, you are the one. They, so if you say, hello, you go at the two people won't stop. Okay. You'll be, you'll be going to, when you reach where you are going. And then they started cutting her. Machets on a young lady, just a scrawny little woman. And they were, they were slashing her. Three men. I should put her to the bus stop there. All she ever did was to stand up. Because let's, let's be clear about something. Those who died that night, whether that is one, two, how many it might be, the panel has found, I believe, that 11 people died. People can cut and dice and dissect and dissemble and lie all the ones faced with each other. Look, in that panel, they're shouting a bomb, look at the bomb, look at the bomb, look at the bomb. Because the retired, there's a retired DIG on that panel. It's a unanimous decision of the panel. It's not like there was a minority report. Mm -hmm. They all agreed. The facts are established. So all these noises that they are making left, right, and center, it is up to the Nigerian people to determine the extent of what the responses should be. But let's not be arguing those ones again. So cutting that young woman, I believe it was clear that they intended to kill her. You don't go slashing someone to the point of cutting to the bone. And she was using that hand to duck. That was why the court was that deep. Not the court. Uh, I quickly just want to ask, why do you think that these people are being targeted? Uh, don't forget, Mr. Degbarua has said that he feels that the people who are threatening him are agents of government. Uh, and and Kamsi also is thinking this in, this, in that same direction. Why do you think that these people are being targeted? What would be the end game? Listen... Um, back in February this year, I was fortunate to become privy to a plot to murder me. I wrote two petitions. One was addressed to the director of the DSS in Lagos State. The second was addressed to the Lagos State Commissioner of Police. I mentioned the names of two persons who were involved in that plot. I never disclosed the names of these persons to the press, and I do not intend to, in order not to scandalize anybody. But I made a report in writing to both agencies of government. 
I believe about a month later, the DSS got in touch with my lawyers to inform my lawyers that that would be a responsibility for the police and that they wouldn't be getting involved in that. The police, I believe, got in touch almost two months later and asked me to come and adopt my petition, which I did. Um, this is, I believe, nine months later, after the petition was written, I have not received a single phone call from the police. And even if one were to be sent to me now, I do not intend to honor it because I now believe that there is a confluence of power in Lagos State that is determined to keep the truth of what happened at the Lekito gate as quiet as it can possibly be, even if that means killing people. Now, if I will put my name to two petitions and take it to these agencies of government, and I'm saying to you that as I sit here today, these have not been deemed serious enough to warrant any investigation in legal state. And then someone like Kamsi, who was kept in safe houses, along with other people who ended up testifying at the, tribe, at the panel. Now that they have gone back to their homes, people are going after them. And with Kamsi, she was slashed with machetes. She's alive today for the grace of God. And then those who went to check her in the hospital yesterday got there, and when they came downstairs to get into their own cars, they found an envelope containing what is evidently clear threats to their own lives as well. Hmm. And then let's tell ourselves the bare truth here. No matter how much we might seek to normalize these insanities that have become part and parcel of our lives as a people. The reality is that I government officials in this country today have committed themselves to keeping the truth of what happened at Lekki Eden. Let's be clear about something. These charges are grievous enough to lead to Ramimba, an organization to which I belong, the radical agenda in the Nigerian Bank, to be making categorical demands that if we are indeed in a democracy, and it has been established that the army was called out on the, ni on the night of the 20th of October, and there were citizens at that toll gate, they were sat on the floor holding flags and they were shot at, even if it was only one person that was killed. The governor, I believe, first said there was one and then he said there was two. The panel has said that there are 11. And there are sufficient testimonies from doctors, Grandview Medical Center, Reddington in Lekki, People have come out to tell us that they treated bullet wounds coming out of that toll gate. They are witness testimonies. LCC has studiously refused to turn over the recordings at that toll gate that would clearly tell the truth of what happened that night. And people have committed, the Minister for Information, that is the spokesperson for our country, the person who is speaking for Nigeria is denying the humanity of those that were killed in that place. Why does the truth become an offense in this country? Why? Why can't, is it too much to admit that, look, a mistake has been made yet? Not necessarily that it's a mistake. We all know it's not a mistake. This is not the first time the Nigerian state will kill, and it's still killing on a daily basis. But this one, you've been caught fair and square. This is not happening in 
uh, it's not, it doesn't happen in Zaria. There is a life feed. The Zaria one is bad enough. 340 something human beings, I believe, 347 or so. That's, that's something I mean, a, a panel of inquiry established. They are not even arguing that one anymore. It's about minimizing the numbers. So it's not something new. It's not something new. But this one, you can't keep denying this because the more lies they're telling, the more they're having to tell. And eventually there would have to be a recourse to fascism because those of us who know the truth of what I spoke to survivors, I'm not going to accept these lies you're telling and help you normalize it. And it's not going to end killing any one of us or injuring people threatening people. It won't change anything. But can, I, can I come in here quickly? Um, and yes, I'm not please. in any way trying to hold brief for the government of Lagos yes, State or any of those people. But um, could, they, could this also be that these, the people who are carrying out these threats or those who lynched um, or tried to kill um, Kamsi could have been some imposters or people who are overzealous, overzealously supporting um, governments, governments at whether the state level or the federal government, we because we saw, we saw a, 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 a pro a pro government group when we, the protests were going on last year, and we saw the same people uh, sometime this year too. So, could it be the handiwork? I'm just asking of people who are probably overzealously trying to support the government stand, and might not necessarily be the government, because I'm wondering. Why would a government stupidly do, do a thing like that, knowing that there will be a blowback of sorts? Let me put it this way. I would answer the last one first. Stupidity is in the nature of Nigerian governance. It's nothing new. If our government and our governors, and I mean governors at all levels, the rulers of Nigeria, if they weren't stupid, we would not be the way we are. So let's leave that bit about being stupid first. But it's not an unfair question, and it's, not, it's also not an unfair defense to raise on behalf of the government. And it's only fair to consider it. After all, life is predictably cheap in our environment. But the problem with that assumption or any such defense on behalf of the government would demand that we must ignore the evidence of our own heights. The evidence of our experiences must be ignored before we would go as far as to offer those excuses on behalf of government, even though we must retain that doubt as reasonable human beings as well. But consider this. I just told you that in February of this year, I became privy to a plan to kill me. It wasn't a threat. It wasn't that somebody was calling me to threaten me. No. Understand that I came to Lagos in 1985 at 17. So I've been in this town for some time. And I've moved around in this town for a while. I've lived in Lekki since 2002. I've been in the Lekki. I've been, I've been around. So I have all kinds of friends in all kinds of places. And I became privy to this, and it was alarming enough, and I, it was credible, exceedingly credible. I had names, I had venue. I have more than I have said. And I wrote a petition. I wrote to the DSS. I wrote, let me not overflow the issue. But suffice to say that months after, no action have been taken. So now, one of the persons who was already being threatened at the time, before they went before the panel, they were in hiding all over the place. When they were going before the panel, they were moving from safe houses. I was involved in this. I know these persons. I know the degree of danger that they were under and the kind of evasive actions that had to be taken to ensure their attendance at the panel. And then such a person now went back to a normal life. She's not somebody who is up and about the place, not some socialite. She then got up as she was at a bus stop coming from her work, and then somebody shone light in her eyes and be like, okay, that they won't go into the panel. It's not like, let's even, like, okay, so maybe 
Perhaps on behalf of the government, let's imagine that in some mischief maker somewhere. Let's imagine that. But what do we do with what we already know? Interestingly, I'm not sure I've been, I've not shared a room with the gentleman ever. So I don't know him personally. But of course I know him by his reputation. He's not a frivolous man. There might be many things. I don't agree with his politics and I doubt that he agrees with mine. But facts are facts. Ebon came out to categorically say that he's been threatened. I didn't have the benefit of hearing threats. <laughs> I became privy to a plan. And each and every one of the persons around me in the last year plus, I've had occasion to take all kinds of evasive actions and countermeasures in relation to their security. We have to ask ourselves, even if we are saying maybe it's not the government sponsoring it, whose responsibility is it to protect the citizens? That, 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 that leads to my next question, because I was going to ask, I mean, th there was a meeting yesterday that um, some of you attended uh, speaking on this same issue. Um, so yeah. going forward, um, who's going to guarantee the safety of these people because they're still out there, like Kamsi? There are several other people who have also spoken before this panel. And this means if, 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 if what Mr. Agborua has said is anything to go by, then it means that every other person on that panel could also be a target. I mean, by whosoever. <laughs> so what is going forward? Again, it's a two-pronged question. It looks like this issue is, being, is a battle fought by a handful of people, and we don't see that crowd you know, backing um, this few in making sure that there's a press for the government to push and make sure that this, everybody's brought to book. So what, what should we be looking forward to? Is there anything really to look forward to? You see, the, the beautiful thing about standing by the truth is that it does not require any embellishment. You don't need to do anything to help the truth to stand tall. If you're telling the truth, you also don't need to remember what you said last year because it's constant. That the truth might not appear popular is deceptive. Nigerians were told consistently, I remember I've been on your show and I remember saying categorically that as long as that panel is allowed to conclude its work, it will certainly strip the Nigerian state naked. That's what it has done. All these dance of shame, all these denials, all these lies, the more they do it, the happier I am. I, as a person, I have never been happier in my life. I am seeing the Nigerian state telling bare-faced lies that we unravel over time. It doesn't matter whether we live or die. Everybody will die eventually. Nobody is going to cow us or get us to... I'm not going to run out of Nigeria. Nobody is running from anybody. If we've committed a crime, let the Nigerian state charge us with that crime. It is the duty of the state to protect us. But we are also not sitting ducks. We haven't survived as long as we have by being stupid. And you don't go announcing the security measures you take to the whole world. Suffice to say that we will not be sitting dogs. Our people know who is who, like the ones who were busy plotting the stupid thing in February. They understand. You can do these things when you are not known. When you are known, when you do, you get done too. That's the way it is. So not that somebody will now sit down somewhere. Nobody can be threatening anybody. We are not running anywhere for anyone. The police has a duty to protect Nigerians. When they are done with their partisanship, they will still remember their primary duty. It's not up to us. It's up to the state to protect us as citizens. But, 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 but Mr. Lai Mohammed just recently, I mean, he somewhat made a, a, a joke of, you know, 
everything that has been said. Every Nigerian was earnestly waiting for the federal government to speak on this issue. And they kept saying that, oh, the, 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 the panel's uh, reports may not necessarily be presented to the federal government. They might not have a hand in it, et cetera, et cetera. I, but today, Mr. Mohammed is calling it tales by... Yes. ...to be as, uh, answerable and who were in a part of this, if they're all supposed to be answerable and the federal government is speaking in this regard, will it ever do anything for, you know, to make this? The, the true joke, the joke is Mr. Lai Mohammed, is not the panel's report. The true joke is Mr. Lai Mohammed, is a joke. Is a joke because I probably... I might be the only Nigerian who wasn't holding my breath waiting for him to talk because it was always predictable what he would have to say. They've been saying the same thing they've been saying in different varying, varying uh, positions for the last one year. They have no choice. As long as they have to continue pretending that we are a democracy, they cannot own up to what they have done. But they will not always remain in power. Men come and go. Seasons end. Muhammadu Buhari will leave power in 2023. He does not have the capacity to own up to what he did. None of them would dare to own up to what they did. They committed crimes. That was what they did. And they have to keep lying. And let's, let's be clear about something, because some of us tend to get this twisted. The international community is clear. They know what happened. They know what happened, but it is not in their own interest to also admit to what they know. So those of us who are demanding the truth, we are not demanding the truth, expecting that anybody will come and join us to demand the truth from our government. They will not. We also do not expect that every Nigerian would accept, because a lot of people would prefer that we kept quiet and life does returns to normal for them. I don't know exactly what normal seems. What normalcy? What, what is normal about the way we live? I don't know. But some of us have committed our lives to seeking this truth. Mm. I'm, I'm curious. They can attack I'm curious. Truth. I'm so sorry. Finally, before I let you go. Are you saying that the government of Nigeria, and I'm talking about the government, government of Lagos State and every other state that had this protest, including the army and the police, risk sanctions from the international community um, for them to keep a tight lip, because that's what you're saying. They may not ever tell the truth. This is what, what you're saying. I'm, try, I'm struggling to believe that this is what will happen, because we just had um, the Secretary of State for the United States visit, and then the undertone of that visit is that we may risk sanctions if human rights issues are not being addressed. I would prefer to see sanctions issued by the Nigerian people, not, I'm not holding my breath waiting for America or Blinken or Mr. Boris Johnson or any one of the Western powers or China or anyone. I'm not expecting any one of them to do anything for us. They do not have the moral will to do the right thing in Africa. They are complicit in our mess. As long as the Nigerian government can continue to hold on to its bare-faced lies of nothing happened on the 20th, and they can cow people sufficiently, perhaps kill enough people to finally silence the demand for justice, the international community is happy with whatever we do to ourselves. As long as we don't become refugees in their land, why do you think America will not give? Look, they, as far as they are concerned, as long as the oil continues to flow and we have the stupid money to spend where we go and they, you, 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 you buy something that you should buy for a hundred million, you buy it for one billion, you borrow two billion, you share ten. It's all, they are happy with the way we are. I'm not interested in what the international community cares to do with the truth they already know. It is we Nigerians, we ourselves, who need to be interested in the truth because okay. this life is transient. Mm. 
Mm. We will go someday. What kind of country do we expect to bequeath to our children? One where it is normal for policemen and soldiers to kill civilians and then have government officials come out and deny that they did it? Is that the kind of country we want to leave when we are gone? Well, I guess that's a question that we'll all have to marinate on. Thank you so we much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Dilip Farah to me is a political analyst. Thank you for being part of the conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Thank you all for staying with us. Still on Plus Politics coming up. Former governor of Imo State, Emeka Iherioha, declares his intention to run for office again. But many people are not happy. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll discuss.